All right, for this video, we are going to be unboxing Sage of Halo from Ronin Warriors or Euroiden Samurai Troopers. This is the Sentinel release. I got this from the Big Bad Toy Store. So before I get to unboxing this video, please like the video. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, that would really, really help me out a lot. Uh, I'll put the timestamps below as well. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing. sees nothing else inside the box besides the packing material and then you had your big bag toy store kind of purchase card I guess that's what I'll call it so I did pick up three of these so one for me to display one to kind of keep in huddle and I had one of them as a gift and I purchased it with the standard version if I bought the collectibles version it would actually be shrink wrapped Judging by how it looks, I mean, it's pretty good condition anyways in a standard edition. Pretty happy overall still. Yeah, it looks like there's only one tape right here. Nothing in the box. You have the instruction manual that is shrink wrapped. Yeah, first reaction so far with the instruction manual. This is probably the most in depth instruction manual that I have gotten from anything that's kind of like one of these uh, Ronin Warriors builder type of thing. So I'm pretty happy that Sentinel has one of these kind of instruction manuals that have the pictures so you can come up with different kind of stances and poses so that's pretty cool Right off the bat, I noticed like he has like little screws in him. I'm not sure if the uh, Armor Plus by Bandai one has like those little screws, but the way it looks, it has kind of like this glossy kind of look to it. And then the way the joints move, it's pretty, it's pretty, um, it's pretty smooth. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be anything that's like significantly off about it, but so far so good. Go ahead and take off this faceplate. Looks like his head comes in like three different pieces. The back part of his hair, and then you have the front part of, or the top part of his hair. And then you have the faceplate. I guess first things first, you gotta put on this breastplate. So kind of put it on his hips, the hip plates, I guess that's what I'll call it. It actually has like, it has the kind of letters on there, like right, left, right, left. So <laughs> I tried to put it on like the opposite, my right in my right hand, but really it's your left that needs to be in your right hand and the right that needs to be in your left hand. I'm an idiot. Then after the hips on, it looks like there's a couple plates. The one with the gold strip 
goes right on top. It's kind of hard to see. Same thing with the back piece. So this is gonna kinda, this part kinda goes upright. All right. Oh my goodness. So it took me about 10, 15 minutes just to get to like the side, the hip pieces. And then these two back pieces that, that kinda pretty much clamps on. Then it looks like we're putting on kind of his shoulder pads. And then we're gonna be taking these off. Looks like the, the one, the one with the lightning bolt is gonna be on his left side. And it looks like it just kind of clamps on. And it looks like now we're going to be taking this part off. Kind of his arm piece. His arm, his forearm, whatever <laughs> part of the arm that is. So we can put on, looks like, this piece. You can see that there's like a hole right there. So you kind of just insert this in, into the hole. That was a nice smooth transition. Again, these joints do move like a bit smoother than the than the Bandai Armor Plus versions of these. So it's pretty cool. And then last thing, we're gonna be inserting his legs. You can see on his like foot, I guess it just comes straight out like that. And then the other armor foot piece, it just goes straight in. You can see his foot joints like right here at like right his ankles. It's really smooth. That's kind of one thing I've noticed about this one, this figure, the Sentinel version as well as like the leg movement is a little bit more dynamic. You kind of move it around and it doesn't feel like it's it's fragile or anything. It feels like, you know, it moves where it needs to move and it feels like it's going to stay there if you want to leave it there. So that's really, really nice about this. All right. And then now we have kind of have the leg to knee piece and it just latches straight on. Yeah, these spikes that's on him, it's pretty sharp. <laughs> the I try to kind of push it in. To, don't do that, guys. It's kind of hazardous. All right, now for the head. I already took off the head. There was about four pieces, or really three pieces, sorry. There was three pieces that kind of came off his head. The face plate and then the two pieces for his hair. And we're going to put on his helmet. So it comes in two pieces, so it just kind of rips off. And it looks like there's a hair underneath piece that's separate from the original piece that came on his head already. So I guess this goes right under the helmet. If you can kind of see there. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch out his faceplate to the more grinning looking one. And then along with that hair piece that goes inside, this face piece just goes straight over. How does it? 
I was just kind of worried when you put in when you put in his faceplate, like his ears. It looks like it gets in the way. That's what I was kind of scared of. But it looks like it matches up exactly where it needs to stop. So just kind of be careful for his ears when you kind of push in his faceplate onto his head. Then now you just put on the rest of his helmet, the front part of his helmet, and it just slides straight on. That is freaking awesome. Now we have Seja Halo. Seja Halo that's kind of grinning. Oh man, this is so freaking tight, guys. <coughs> oh man. I, I don't have the Ryo Wildfire one yet. I started collecting in September 2021, and then I saw the Ryo Wild, Wildfire, or Rio uh, Wildfire be released the year before. I'm like, crap, now I have to buy the reseller price, but I think it's worth it. I think this figure is like freaking, I am, <laughs> I'm in love with this figure. This is so awesome. <laughs> I have, I'm like almost speechless. It's like, it's going to make me feel so good putting this in the display. Look at that. So tight. This is so tight. I'm just adjusting the shoulder pads. It looks like this kind of part right here, it kind of have to be careful right here. I kind of had to push it back into the place because it didn't fit on the shoulders correctly. Or it was kind of sticking out, but now it is not sticking out. Now I fixed that little part right there so it looks a little bit more even. Alright, we're gonna put his sword together. Quite simply, you just take off his hand and just pops off. One thing to note though, pieces do kind of tend to fall off, especially the arms and the legs when you're trying to put on these uh, pieces, these other pieces that kind of require a lot more force like the hands. Well, was, it took quite a bit of energy to kind of pull out his hands, so his arm piece kind of fell out again. Then we're going to go for the hands that are gripping. And it looks like the sword comes in three pieces. So you have the end of his sword, you kind of have the tip part of the sword, and then you kind of have that the star part that kind of inserts in. Then you have the back part of the sword, the handle, really cool. We're going to go ahead and put his hand back on real quick. And like I said, the hand part is probably the hardest part to kind of take out and take in. It looks like it requires the most kind of strength and force to kind of remove it and then push it back in. So kind of be careful when you put in the hands. It is kind of difficult. I might have to do this off camera because yeah, the hands most definitely the hardest part of putting together this whole figure. So be very, very careful when you put on his hands. I got to put on his other hand right now. Ah, I ain't gonna lie, guys. That took me a good, like, 10 minutes just to get back on his hands. And I just, I only changed his right hand because that's where I want to put the sword. And I kept the fisted hand back in his arm. Jeez. Whew. That was rough. And it looks like when you put together the sword, you kind of have to put it separately. Looks like this top part goes into his hand. And this bottom part has to kind of get shoved through his hand. <laughs> so what I did, guys, I actually, I flipped it over and used this kind of sharper piece to kind of help prop open his hand. And then I held on to with my finger. And then I kind of just, since it's opened up, and I was able to kind of just squeeze it in there. When it comes to pieces, when it comes to like swords and stuff, well, I've noticed a lot from other figures is like when you have to squeeze the weapon through, there's always going to be a little bit of paint that gets chipped off. It just kind of comes with the territory, but it doesn't really matter. No one really, you can't, it's not like it's the outside of it. It doesn't like mess with the outside of the, the paint or anything, but just one thing to note. Now, put the top piece on. All right, so I just finished putting together Seja Halo Ronin Warriors. So now I have a Sentinel version and then I have the Bandai Armor Plus version. And I kind of get why people like the Sentinel version better. I mean, I've read around like people uh, had issues with um, parts breaking off and that type of thing with the Armor Plus version. But now that it's like side to side and you kind of get the feel of it, Sentinel does make it have like this kind of glossy, shinier kind of feel and touch to it, 
which, you know, I kind of dig that. It's not such a, a bad thing or anything. It does stand out. You know, when you see the light, you kind of see the shine on it. The, the Armor Plus version, you don't really get that much of a shine. I don't think there's too big of a difference. I mean, the Armor Plus one does cost a bit more if you're buying from the U.S. store. This is going to cost you, this This costs me like 200 bucks plus. This costs 145 150 with tax and all that. So there is like pretty much a $50 difference between the two. If you buy overseas, I think this was more closer to 140 This is probably more closer to like 120 without shipping and handling. So they're a bit closer in price. Um, but I mean, I, I, I like both. Honestly, so far I like both, but you know, putting on both of these, this was my first one that I put on the, the Infernal Armor one, but it wasn't that difficult. There's a few pieces like the hit piece that kind of falls off easily. In, in the Sentinel version, you have kind of the same issue just with the arms, but when you're trying to like move them around and stuff, it, it, it he does kind of like fall off or the, the parts on his arms do kind of fall off, his leg parts maybe uh, sometimes fall off, but that's not, it's not that big of a deal. As long as it doesn't come off, break, scrape, scratch, anything like that, it doesn't really matter because you'll be able to put it back together pretty easily. I think the hardest part that I had with the Sentinel one was actually the fist or the, the, the hand joints putting it in it took me like 10 minutes it took me like 10 minutes just to put him his hand back together and i kind of had to squeeze it in tight to my body to kind of get enough like tight force that's not that, that could shove it in there but other than that this is really easy to put together really really easy to put together the instructions very simplistic you know picture this put this here take this off you know, step one, step two. Now was really, really easy for me to put together. A child could do this, <laughs> but they might ha have some struggles with some of the pieces to kind of push in. But I mean, overall, this is a pretty awesome figure. I picked this up from Big Bad Toy Store. Um, th this one is sold out real quick. So I bought three of them, one for myself to kind of display, one to kind of hold in the box and kind of just keep to collect. And I have another one as a gift for my brother. So that's what I'm going to do with the three that I have. But man, now I'm starting to think maybe I should have bought some more because this, this figure is just awesome. I can see why a lot of people really, really like this figure. So this is definitely a must get for anyone that's a fan of the show, fan of the figures. The look, it, it, it's awesome. It comes with so many different pieces. You could do so much with it. And, you know, I'll be happy to display this. Please, if you guys need to get it, it's going to probably, it's probably sold out, honestly. By the time I get this out, I don't think you're going to be able to pick up, pick this one up. So you're going to have to go to the, the, you know, the resale market. And it, I saw it on eBay for like $250 plus already. So you're going to be paying a good like $100 premium for this figure already. So yeah. Please like the video, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So please go to otakusin.com, you know, check out that website, subscribe there. Like and subscribe to the channel. Please go to my website, otakusin.com, if you guys want to read more in depth about the figure. I'll definitely have way more pictures there. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you.